Welcome to the last part of the pharmaceutical calculations and in this short lecture I'll be sharing with you calculations for parenteral preparation involving millimole per liter and milli equivalent per liter. Let me first share with you the meanings of millimole and milli equivalents. So millimoles is just a smaller unit of mole and you can remember that a mole means the amount of substance contain as many elemental units as they are as compared with the 12 gram of carbon isotope 12 and in parental preparation to use moles may be too big so everything will be expressed in a smaller form which is the millimole so what makes millimole and milli equivalence difference is that milli equivalence consider the charge of the ions so it refers to the gram equivalent weight of an ion, which is the ionic weight in gram divided by the valence of the ions. Let's us start with a very basic example here. Imagine you have one millimole per liter of sodium chloride. So first you need to identify the chemical formula where sodium chloride consists of sodium ion and chloride ion. And from there, we start to calculate for each of the parameters listed here. So for sodium ions, one millimole per liter of sodium chloride contains one millimole of sodium ion and one millimole of chloride ions. So in this case, we just times 1 millimoles times 1 species of sodium ions and you will get 1. So you just repeat the same for chloride ions and you have 1. For milli equivalent per liter, you have to consider the charge. So here, sodium ion has 1 positive, so 1 times 1 you will get the same for chloride ions, we consider the charge. So 1 millimole times 1 charge, you get 1. So I hope that you are clear now. And you have to always remember that milli equivalence for the ion inside a salt must be equivalent. So both sides must be equivalent for cation and anion. So let's move on with the ionic weight for one milli equivalent per liter of each of the ion here. So let's say if you have one milli equivalent per liter of sodium ions, how much is the weight of this ion? You just have to times one milli equivalent with the molecular weight of sodium and you will get 23 milligram. So you have to do the same for the chloride and you will get 35.5 mg because it's 1 mL equivalent per liter, you have 35.5 mg of chloride ions. What happens if we have now the salt, sodium ion, how much does it weigh if we have 1 mL equivalent of each of the salt? Let's say we have 1 mL equivalent of sodium ions so how much is it equal to for the salt in terms of weight? So first we need to convert milli equivalents to millimole. So one milli equivalent of sodium ions is equal to one millimole per liter of sodium ions. And one millimole per liter of sodium ions is the same as one millimole of sodium chloride. So with that, one milli equivalent per liter of sodium ions contained in one millimole of sodium chloride. So you just have to times one millimole per liter with the total molecular weight of the salt, which is 58.5, and you will get 58.5 milligram. So the same happens to chloride ions. So one milli equivalent per liter of chloride ions 
is equivalent to 1 millimole per liter and 1 millimole per liter of chloride ion is contained in 1 millimole of sodium chloride salt. So 1 millimole per liter of sodium chloride has 58.5 milligram. So what happens when we have 1 millimole per liter of each of the ions? I believe that you are clear now because each of them is just 1 and 1. So you should get 58.5 milligram for each of the ions to have 1 millimole per liter. Now let's look at a different example where you have the valence more than 1 for the ions. In this example, you have 1 millimole per liter of calcium chloride. First, you need to identify the chemical formula calcium CaCl2. So in this salt, you have 1 calcium 2 plus ion and 2 chloride 1 minus ion. So now you have to calculate for rest of the parameter listed here. So first let's look at the millimole per liter. So as I said before, 1 millimole of the ions have to times with the available amount of ions in the salt. So in this case, there's only one calcium ion exists in this salt. So 1 millimole times 1, you get 1. However, for chloride ions, there are two species chloride ions here. So 1 millimole times 2, you will get 2 millimole per liter of chloride ions in this salt. For milliequivalent per liter, you have to consider the charge or valence. So in this case, calcium has 2 plus, so 2 times 1, you will get 2. For chloride ions, 1 minus 1 times 2, you will get 2. I would like to stress on again here, you must always check the milliequivalent value for the ions because they are always equivalent for both K ion and N ion. Now we calculate the N ionic weight for one milliequivalent per liter of each of the ions. So again we start from one milliequivalent per liter of calcium ions. One milliequivalent of calcium ions has half millimole and half millimole of calcium ions has half millimole of calcium chloride. So in this case for ionic weight one milliequivalent per liter has half millimole of calcium ions and this half times the molecular weight of this ion and you have 20 milligram. And for chloride ions 1 milliequivalent per liter of chloride ion has 1 millimole per liter of chloride ion. So 1 millimole per liter of chloride ion times with the molecular weight and you will get 35.5 milligram. Let's just look now look at the weight of the salt for calcium chloride when it contains 1 milliequivalent per liter of each of the iron. Let's first look at the calcium ions. As we discussed before, one milliequivalent per liter of calcium ion has half millimole per liter of calcium ions, and half millimole of calcium ions contained inside half millimole of calcium chloride salt. So you take half times the molecular weight of the salt and you get 73.5 mg. So the same happens for chloride ions. So 1 milliequivalent per liter of chloride ion has 1 millimole per liter of chloride ions and this contains 
in half of the millimole of the calcium chloride salt. So you have to take half times the molecular weight of the salt and you will get 73.5 milligram. However, when you have 1 millimole per liter of calcium ions, you will have 1 millimole of calcium chloride salt. So 1 times the molecular weight of the salt and you will get 147 milligram. However, when you have 1 millimole per liter of chloride ions, you have to divide by 2 to get half millimole of calcium chloride because there are two species of chloride ion content in one of the salt. So we take half millimole times the molecular weight of calcium chloride and you will get 73.5 milligram. And this following two tables summarize what we have discussed in the previous two slides. We now look at the actual situation where we can apply these calculations. So this calculation is for parenteral preparation such as intravenous infusions. So in this case, we have sodium potassium sulfate chloride ions to be prepared in 1 liter of water for injections. So first you have to identify the K ion and the N ions and then following by recognizing the salt given which pairing the ions given. So let's just first match the ions. So it would be good if you can present it in the table so everything will be shown clearly. So for here, we we'll start with the ions with the lower number. So in this case, we have sodium followed by sulfate and then chloride and the last potassium. So we start with sodium and in here we have only one salt that contains sodium which is sodium chloride. So the 20 will fall under sodium chloride. So to match with the N ions, you must have 20 chloride ions. So the leftover you have 55 minus 20 and you have 35 chloride ion over here. So this 35 milli equivalents per liter of chloride ion going to match with the other salt which contains chloride ion which is potassium chloride. So in this case you have 35 milli equivalents per liter of potassium ions. So you still have leftover of 50 potassium ions and this 50 potassium ions going to match with the sulfate ions in the potassium sulfate so which is exactly 50 so total up both sides 105 and 105 for k ion and ions and you will see here now the calculation is correct because we get both sides the same for milli equivalent per liter once we have the milli equivalent per liter done we have to convert it into millimole per liter. So in this case, we need a factor called valence or charge. So to convert from milliequivalence to millimole, we need to divide by valence or charge. However, the other way, we have to multiply by valence. So here, we have 20 milliequivalence per liter of sodium ion, which is 1 plus. So you just have to divide by 1. And the same for potassium ions. However, for sulfate ion, which is 2 minus, you have to divide by 2 and chloride ion divide by 1 and you get this number. So again, we tablet them according to each of the salt. 20 to match with 20, okay, 35 to match with 35 because they are all 1 plus and 1 minus. However, for potassium sulfate, for 50 minimum of potassium ions to be matched with 25 minimum of sulfate ion because we have two potassium to match with one sulfate ion. So total of both sides, you have 105 minimum per liter and 80 minimum per liter. 
So for millimole per liter, both side not necessarily has to be the same, especially when you have balance more than once inside your formulations. So move on, we need to convert the millimole for each of the ion to the salt. So here, for sodium chloride and potassium chloride, we have no problem because both are involving valency of 1. So we get 20 millimole per liter of sodium chloride and 35 for potassium chloride. So we will have problem for potassium sulfate. So we're going to solve this problem by looking back at these golden rules. So first we have 50 milli equivalents and 50 milli equivalents for both of the ions. So 50 milli equivalent per liter of potassium ion has 50 millimole per liter because it's only 1 plus However, for sulfate, it is 25 because it's 2 minus. So, from here, we have to convert it into millimole per liter for potassium sulfate salt. So, in 1 mole or 1 millimole of potassium sulfate, you have 2 mole or millimole of potassium and one mole or millimole of sulfate ions. So for 50 millimole per liter of potassium ions, you will have 25 millimole of potassium sulfate. Or we can look at the cat anion part where 25 millimole per liter of sulfate ions is contained inside 25 millimole of potassium sulfate because there is only one sulfate ion present in the salt. With that, we know that with 50 millimole per liter of potassium ions and 25 millimole per liter of sulfate ions, we will have 25 millimole per liter of potassium sulfate salt. So to make your calculation easier, you can always take the smaller number to be multiplied or to become the millimole per liter of your salt. You all now know how to convert from milli equivalent per liter to millimole per liter or vice versa. The next step you have to know is to convert millimole per liter to milligram per liter and further to percentage weight per volume. So in order for you to convert millimole per liter to milligram per liter, you need a factor called molecular weight. So molecular weight is in the unit of gram per mole or is the same for milligram per millimole. So now let's see how we can convert from 1 millimole per liter to milligram per liter. So 1 millimole per liter can be expressed as 1 millimole divided by 1 liter. And in order to change to or convert to milligram, we need the ratio on the factor of a molecular weight. So we just multiply with the molecular weight and you will get milligram per liter. So in order to convert from millimole per liter to milligram per liter, you just have to multiply. However, for the other way, you have to divide. We've done the discussions on the conversions from millimole per liter to milligram per liter or the other way around. So now let's look at from the conversion from milligram per liter to percentage weight per volume. So to do that, we need a factor. So how do we determine the factor? So as you know that percentage weight per volume means that gram or one part or one gram per 100 ml. So imagine you have one milligram per liter. It means that you have one milligram in one liter 
So to convert it to grams, well, one milligram is equal to 0.001 gram per 1,000 mil. So in order to keep gram and 100 mil, so we have to take out one zero, and this zero had to put it to the top, and it will it means that 0 0.001 gram in 100 mil. So one milligram per liter is equal to 0.0001%. So and this factor is 10,000. So for milligram per liter will to be converted to percentage weight per volume, you need to divide by 10,000. However, from the conversion of percentage weight per volume to milligram per liter, you need to times a factor of 10,000. So with the discussion just now, I'm sure that you have no problem to convert between these units. So from millimole per liter to be converted to milligram per liter, you need a factor called molecular weight. So simply just times the molecular weight with the millimole per liter and you will get 1,170 1, milligram per liter of sodium chloride or 1.17 gram per liter. And from milligram per liter to be converted to percentage weight per volume, you will need to divide by a factor of 10,000 and you will get 0.12%. So I'm sure that you have no problems now to convert for the rest of the salt. With the calculation you have done, now you can express or have your own formula for this one liter of intravenous infusions where you have 1.2 gram of sodium chloride salt 2.6 gram of potassium chloride and 4.4 gram of potassium sulfate to be talked up to one liter using water for injection now i would like you to try on your own when you have the same amount of iron but in a different volume so how would the milli equivalents changes in your calculations so we have now another example here where you are given every ion in the form of millimole and the very first thing you have to do is to identify the cations and the anions as well as the salt given in this prescription once you have identified the cation and ion, you now have to tabulate them in the table form so that you can match the ions. So we always start with the lowest number, so which is here the magnesium ions. So 5 millimole per liter of magnesium ion is to be matched with 5 millimole per liter of sulfate ions, and this is the only sort that we can find magnesium ions. So the leftover 5 millimole per liter of sulfate ions is to be matched with 10 millimole per liter of potassium ion which is found in potassium sulfate. And always remember that one sulfate ion is to match with two potassium ions which is written down in the chemical formula of the salt. So from the leftover of potassium ions which is 30 millimole per liter we have to look for other salt that contain potassium, which is potassium chloride. So 30 to be matched with 30 millimol per liter of chloride ions. And from the leftover for chloride ions, so the only salt leftover is sodium chloride. So this is going to be matched with 20 millimol per liter of sodium ions. So total up from both sides, you have 65 millimol per liter of K ion and 60 millimole per liter of anion. To have a quick calculation for the milli equivalent per liter for each of the salt, so to convert from millimole per liter to milli equivalent per liter, you have to multiply with the charge. So 20 times 1, 20. So 40 times 1, 40. And 5 times 2, you got 10. And total up, you have 70 milliequivalent per liter for cations. However, for anions, you have 10 times 2, which is 20, 
and 50 times 1 you got 50 and you have the same number as the cations so so this is a way that you can check whether you have the right calculations and from there you have to find out the millimole per liter for each of the salt so as I always say you take the lowest number so for valence equal to 1 you have no problem however when you have valence more than 1 which at present in magnesium sulfate and potassium sulfate you have to take the lowest number so with that I'm sure you have no problem to convert millimole per liter to milligram per liter we just multiply with the molecular weight given and from there to convert milligram per liter to percentage weight per volume you just have to divide by 10,000 finally you have to come up with your own formula from the calculation they have done so for this 1 liter intravenous infusions you will have 0.1 gram of sodium chloride 2.2 gram of potassium chloride 1.2 gram of magnesium sulfate heptahydrate 0.9 gram of potassium sulfate in a total of 1 liter of water for injection with the same example with different amount of millimole of the ions I would like you to try on your own to calculate if the volume given is 250 or 500 ml now we have our third example where you are given a list of salt and its amount in terms of gram and you have to be careful because now the total volume is 500 ml but not 1 liter so anyway we first identify the cations and the anion so when you have everything ready so template them in this kind of table so from the two previous example you are given milli equivalents of millimole so you have to convert them to millimole per liter and then to milligram per liter and then to percentage weight per volume however in this case we are doing the other way around so you start from milligram per liter so you have to be careful here because the amount given in is in 500 ml so when you have to convert it into milligram per liter you have to put two times the amount so from there you convert it into percentage weight per volume and then you divide that with molecular weight and you get the millimole per liter for each of the salt okay and then for each of the salt you identify the millimole per liter for each of the ions and then you total up them or you can start tabulating in the table form so for sodium ions the millimole per liter is 68.4 so you have no problem and potassium chloride you have no problem however for magnesium sulfate where each of the ions is 2 plus and 2 plus so remember the principle millimole per liter takes the number of species present so in magnesium sulfate, there is one species of magnesium and one species of sulfate. So it remains the same because it's just time one. However, for potassium sulfate, the number of millimole per liter for the salt is 34.5. However, in each of the salt, there is two species of potassium ion. So you have to times two. However, there's only one species of sulfate ion, so you have to times once. So to convert from millimole per liter to milli equivalent per liter, you just have to multiply with the valency. So now everything is in valence of once, except magnesium sulfate and yeah, so just magnesium and sulfate ions for both magnesium sulfate salt and potassium sulfate salt so you have to times 2 for this 3 number so when you sum up both sides you see that both sides get the same 
amount for the milli equivalent per liter and this is again a way to check whether your calculation is accurate or what you can do is you keep the amount in whatever given in this case 500 per mil you can also start doing that however you have to be bear in mind that the amount you calculated here for everything is for 500 mil which all this number is half from the previous slide apart from the four methods that we have discussed in the previous few lectures for isotonic CT adjustment for parameter preparations we also can use another method by calculating the total milliliter equivalent per liter of the formulations so in our blood plasma it contains 155 milliequivalent per liter of cat ions as well as 155 milliequivalent per liter of N ions so it means that when the total up you have 310 milliequivalent per liter so when you have one intravenous infusion when the total up for both K ion and N ions achieve 110 milliequivalent per liter your intravenous infusion is isotonic so we use this equation here if you rearrange 310 is equal to a plus b or b is equal to 310 minus a where a is the things that already exist in the system and b is the one added to adjust so let's see how we can apply the concept of a total ion and N ion equal to 310 milliequivalent per liter in this example. So we are given here the formula of potassium chloride where you have 20 milliequivalent per liter for each of the ions and sodium chloride is the one to adjust the system to be isotonic. So first we identify for potassium chloride the total milliequivalent per liter for both K ion and N ion is 40 because you have 20 milliequivalent per liter for each of the ions. And by applying the equation, the 310 should minus whatever that is present in the system and the remaining should be covered by sodium chloride. So this 270 milliequivalent per liter for sodium chloride consists of both K ion, the sodium ion, and N ion, the chloride ion. So you have to divide by 2 and you will get 135 milliequivalent per liter for both ions. So now we need to find out how much of both salt needed in terms of gram. So for 20 milliequivalent per liter of chloride ions or potassium ion it gives you one sorry give you 20 millimole per liter of potassium chloride because each of the ions presents only once in the salt so 20 millimole per liter of potassium chloride in order to know the amount in gram you need to multiply by molecular weight so the molecular weight for potassium chloride is 74.5 and you end up you have 1.5 gram of potassium chloride and for sodium chloride 135 milliequivalent per liter of the ions has 135 millimole of sodium ions and with that you have 135 millimole per liter of the sodium chloride salt and the same you multiply with the molecular weight and you should get 7.9 gram and you have your formula now you have 1.5 gram for potassium chloride and about 8 gram of sodium chloride to make 1 liter intravenous infusion isotonic with that I would like to thank you, you for the attention you have given for all the lectures and 
The last part is a bit confusing, but I hope that you can take time to practice the exercise. Thank you.